first person I want to introduce is Dr. Mike Fadich. Mike, you want to come up here and make a few comments? This is a letter to the editor, um, and it's entitled, In Praise of Dr. Farah. R.E. Tyler Farah's father in accident. Editor, let me join what should be a chorus of distraught voices responding to the news of that recent car bicycle accident involving Tyler Farah's father, Ed, Dr. Ed Farah. While I never received this sort of news well, in this particular instance it is incredibly depressing. While I've never met Dr. Farah personally, I was given his name and phone number by a friend when my local Seattle sports doctor's response to my knee problem was, quote, well, you just may not be able to ride anymore, unquote. I was shocked by this in my doctor's general demeanor and fearful that what he said might be true. But I had not given up hope, so I called Dr. Farah. He spent at least 45 minutes with me on a long distance phone call. He listened carefully to my case history, helped me identify some drugs that might help and encourage me to try to ride through the pain. His prescription was right on target. I still ride regularly and am able to manage the pain issues just fine. Dr. Ferrer refused payment for this time and made me feel like he was more than happy to help a fellow cyclist. I sent him a case of wine anyhow, but I was startled by this man's generosity and kindness. Only recently I started riding with another fellow who turned out to know Dr. Farah quite well and he told me that Ed is Tyler's father. What a strange and happy coincidence. I had not managed to put two and two together myself. As I watched Vela News coverage this season, I was so pleased to see Tyler have what can only be described as a breakthrough year. I was sure his father must have been incredibly proud. Now we have this terrible news. I hope that all your readers will join me in wishing the best to this fine man and his family. As more details on Dr. Fair's recovery become available, I hope that Velo News will keep us informed. David White, Clinton, Washington. Thank you, Mike. Next, another uh, local icon in the medical community, Michael Hansen, would like to say a few words about his good friend, Ed Farrow. Mike? Well, first of all, uh, I want to thank Cindy Farrow for her love, loyalty, and courage and strength that she's shown over the last several weeks in being there for Ed. I also want to thank uh, Tyler and Fletcher for being such strong sons. To also be there for their father. And these, these traumas affect the whole family, not just the, the victim. And uh, he's going to need their support in the, the weeks and months to come. And uh, I know that he's very proud of you, Tyler and, and Fletcher. And, he constantly talks about the two of you. You most recently showed me a little videotape of Fletcher doing some free climbing, which scared the piss out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he talks about you know Tyler all the time when he, uh, when Tyler's able to call him on the cell phone. So um, you know he's very proud of you guys, and uh, you're a great, great, great example of the kind of man that Ed is, and kind of the uh, parents, both Cindy and Ed, have been for you too. Uh, everyone has an Ed Ferris story. As uh, so we look around the community here, it's wonderful to see everyone showing up here. And I know you have stories just like I do. I can remember my first story with Ed. It was about eight years ago when I was, when he had just formed the, the Velo Cycling Club and a bunch of us were going to go ride to the Wenatchee Heights Loop and we were climbing up these steep hills and I was kind of lagging behind and Ed was nice enough to kind of drop back and talk to me while we were climbing the hills and, and then uh, when we reached a steep incline, he would take off and leave me, and then <laughs> drop back again and talk to me a little bit more, and then take off and leave me again. And I didn't feel so bad being left by Ed, even though he was six years older than me. <laughs> what made me feel bad is that three weeks later, I saw him walking around, or I should say limping around, 
when I actually going into Gold's Gym with a big swollen knee and I asked him what was wrong, and he said I just had a total knee replacement. And it was then that I realized that I was beat by an older man with one leg. Thank you, you have to be patient with me, this is tough. I thought I was going to be able to get through this, I hope I can. I've uh, been associated with Ed for 23 years now. He's the one that really brought me to Wenatchee, and um, I, I must admit it's the best decision I ever made. Uh, it's been a, a, a great career practicing with both uh, Ed and Dr. Deal and, and also Dr. Brownlee and, and now uh, Hank Pavoda. Um, you, you couldn't ask for a better bunch of guys. Uh, Ed is, is probably one of the strongest uh, people I know both physically as well as emotionally and spiritually. Uh, he's probably as deep a thinker as anybody will, will ever come across. And you put the combination of Ed and Cindy together and you can really see why Tyler is a world-class cyclist. I mean, it's, it's, it's all there. And, and not to take anything away from Tyler, but he's got the foundation. Um, it's, it's got a long road ahead of him. Uh, he's, he's, again, very strong, very innovative. Uh, I think my favorite story of Ed, as far as innovation is concerned, was uh, Mike said a little bit about him going back and forth to Seattle. Uh, he was trying to keep up a busy practice here and, and do a fellowship uh, in spine surgery. Most people take uh, two years off to do it. Ed did it while he was still practicing. Uh, it was hard to make that trip in the middle of the night, so he had tried all kinds of things to keep awake. He had trouble falling asleep. Uh, he put the thing in his ear that if he tilted it, it would buzz and wake him up. That didn't work very well, so he actually taped his eyelids open. <laughs> He made it home, but was treated for corneal abrasions. Hi, first I uh, just want to say thank you so much. This is incredible. You know, we, uh, we had thought if 100 people showed up, that would be uh, great. And you know, this is so far above and beyond anything we'd hoped for. And it, it kind of brings home just how, how much of an effect my dad had on this community. And, you know, I, I, I know that having you all out here supporting him means means more than, than words can say to him right now. And he's got a long road ahead of him, but with with this kind of support and love coming from all of you, I think uh, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I think like everyone said it's it's not gonna be easy, but he's a tough guy and uh, I know all the, the emails, the letters, the, the phone calls, the cards it's been it's been overwhelming in a in a fantastic way. It's you know my family appreciates it. I know my dad appreciates it. I'm incredibly. It's it's hard to even put into words just what it means to us to see uh, to see so many people here who care about my dad and who uh, who just want to to support him and want the best for him. And, you know it's it's great. Thank you all so much. It's a, it's a few more blocks back down to the Performing Arts Center. This is, um, if anything, uh, a bike advocacy related issue. So please be safe. There's gonna be a lot of people on the road. We don't have police escort going back. So please be safe um, as you negotiate your way back down to the Performing Arts Center. Um, and I think Ed can hear us. So maybe we can do a one, two, three, Ed cheer. Hopefully he'll, he'll be able to reach that. So on three, we'll do one, two, three, we'll do an Ed, one, Two, three. Yeah! Thanks for coming out. Right there, please.